Oh, yes. Don't tell me God ain't looking at you, Howard. Oh, yes. Put some clothes on the people in church. That's right. Have naked mini skirts and little halfters and blouses about this big and wigs on and finger rings and earrings and fake hair, fake fingernails and hey man, got your toenails painted, fingernails painted, men and women, got your eyebrows arched, fake hair. That's right. What's the matter with you? That's right. You 80 years old with a midnight black wig on, <laughs> with silver eyebrows. Amen. Grandma, you mishmack. Grandpa, you mishmack. Oh, yeah. Old Bishop dying his gray beard. Oh. Who are you trying to impress? That's right. You trying to pick up your great great granddaughter? Mm. Old Bishop, 75 years old, making babies by the choir members of the church. That's right. And people sit right there and say the Lord work in mysterious ways. Not that mysterious. No, no. <laughs> This type of preaching is needed today. Oh, yeah. This is necessary preaching. Necessary. Huh? Yes, Amen. God wants to put the church back in order. That's right. That's what God is doing. That's right. He's putting the church back in order. Oh, yes. When God sent men, he sent men to put the church back in order. That's it. Folk walking around, I'll be glad when Jesus comes, what are you going to get out of it? What you going to get out of it? you ain't following the doctrine of the apostles, you're not going to be glad. No. God, church is not ready. Oh, no. At all. Oh, no. Because according to the Bible, he going to present to himself a glorious church, not having a spot. Not having a, a spot. spot. Oh, Rachel, though, any such thing, but that is should be holy. That's it. That's the kind of church he going to present himself to. That's Amen. Right. Now, the Bible ain't never said he's coming looking for a church. Church. When you look for a thing, you lost it. Yeah. He didn't lose his church. No. He know what church he left here. That's right. He's coming for the same thing he left. That's right. He left scripture here. He left scripture to govern the body of Christ. That's right. And he's coming back for the body of Christ that's governed by the same scripture. And the body of Christ will not be nobody's organization. That's right. That's right. Get me now. That's right. So you preachers out there that's baptizing these thousands of people, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they still send us. Oh, yes. I'm calling for all the bishops now. All of them. Amen. I want to tangle with all of you. Oh, yeah. Church of God in Christ, come on, bishop. Yeah. Church of God in prophecy, come on, bishop, prophesy this. Oh, yeah. Assemblies of God, come on. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You that baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, none of you say. None of you. You're all wrong. That's right. Your overseer, your bishop, your founders are wrong. That's right. That's come right. on, son. Give me the book of Corinthians. I mean, a great and uh, hard, no, give me a... Um, spiritual things. Yes. I want to compare spiritual things with spiritual. With spiritual. First because Corinthians. The churches, all the people of the churches hear this. Everything in your church, you want to be able to compare it with the Bible. That's right. No matter what it is. The way they serve communion, go That's to the Bible. If they use a tray of glasses, go to the Bible and see that Jesus used a tray of glasses. That's right. If they say you don't have to wash feet, go to the Bible. Yeah. Amen. And see what Jesus said. If I wash thee not, you have no part with no me. No part with me. Huh? That's right. Go to the Bible. See, do you have a woman bishop in the Bible? Because the Bible said if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire the office of good work. For he must be the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. Yeah. Hmm? That's it. You see, this is a hard pill for some folk to swallow, especially if you've been taught for years that five plus five is nine. Yeah. Now we come smashing that line and tell you five plus five is ten. Right. It's not nine. That's right. And you've been taught that all your life. I know it'll hurt many people's feelings. I've been lied to all my life. All my life. All your life. Yes, all your life. All your life. Sometimes your parents just done the best they could because they were lied to too. Yes. What about those that didn't know about the baptism in the name of Pastor, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Pastor Jennings? Well, they're going to give account to God for the light, for the truth that shined while they lived. They're going to be judged by that truth, whatever that truth that stood in their day. 
God won't hold you accountable for what you don't know. That's right. He's not an unjust God. He holds you accountable for what you hear and then tell you, consider what I said, that God may give you the understanding in all things. Right. All you got to do is hear it once. And when you hear it once, you got to consider, consider it right it. then. If you reject it and you stand before God, you're going to go to hell for your rejection. That's right. Come on, son. First Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 13. All right. Which things also we speak. Which things also we speak. Speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Ah, not in the words that man wisdom teach. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Now, if I go to what the Holy Ghost teaches. Holy Ghost teaches. I go to the scriptures. And I don't find nobody's organization in the scriptures. No. Nobody. Nobody. I just found the church. By the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. He said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The church by the Lord Jesus Christ, the church from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the only thing I find in here for everybody to be governed by. That's right. All these other denominations and religions and traditions, amen, just come on back to Bible and do it like the word of God says. That's it. Amen. No apostles now. Come tell me that. Come tell you that. Come tell me there's no more apostles now. Hmm. I make you find the scriptures where the Lord took them out the church. That's right. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God. God. Had set had some, set in, the some in the church. First apostles. Now show me where God took them out. Right. And when you, I'm a demand two scriptures. One, show me where God took them out. Two, show me what office took their place as first. That's right. You better not tell me the bishop is first. I make you read it. Amen. Huh? You better Amen. not tell me the pastor is the first. I make you read it. And God had set God some, had in set some in the church. First apostles. The same things that was in the church then is in the church now. That's right. How in the world can you be the church by the Lord Jesus Christ if you got something in your church that's not in here? Amen. You don't got junior bishops in here. No. You don't have junior elders in here. No. You don't have women in the Bible calling themselves deaconess. No. You don't have that in here. Oh, no. Come on back to Bible. And God has You hear so. me over social media telling you, come on back. That's right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. You don't want to come back to Bible, stay home. Oh, yeah. Stay home. Don't go to no church. <laughs> I don't know whether there's any place to fish around here, but go fishing. <laughs> You're better off. Go fishing and we'll catch all you can because you will soon go to hell. And God had set some in the church. God had set some in the church. First, first apostle, apostle. Let's second. go back and get what I want now. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, back in Corinthians Back now. in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Listen at this. Which things also we speak. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and at verse 13. Listen. Which, which things, things also we speak. Also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. That's what makes my preaching different from everybody. Yeah. Where everybody's trying to hold on to tradition, ideology, history, theory, philosophy. That's right. I'm not interested in none of that. That's right. The only thing I'm interested in Bible. That's it. You see, you learn all that trash in your church, especially in Sunday school. Especially. You learn a lot of philosophy and theology in Sunday school, and the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Then we go back to Corinthians. Listen at this. Colossians 2, 8 says. Beware. That means look out. Lest any man. You know anybody that got a sign on their house, gate. Beware of dogs, you better respect that sign. Better respect. You better respect the sign he reading. <laughs> I say you better respect the sign he reading. Beware. Give chapter and verse. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Look out. Beware lest any man spoil There's you. There's something behind the gate here. That's right. Give chapter and verse. Colossians chapter 2 and at verse 8. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you. That's the problem with churches. You done said amen, amen, jumped and shouted and fell out and tore your clothes and tore your pants and ripped your jacket over philosophy that philosophy. you thought was Bible. That's right. And the Bible said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After what? After the tradition of men. It's men tradition, ordaining women to preach. Oh, yeah. That ain't Holy Ghost tradition. No. It's men tradition. Getting married a second time while your first husband lived and while your first wife lived. That's, That's right. man tradition. That's right. That's not Holy Ghost tradition. No. Holy Ghost tradition said from the beginning it was not so. It's not so. Huh? That's right. Hey Amen. That's man tradition. Get ordained, uh, the right hands of fellowship to get in the church. 
Man tradition say you got to have the rands of fellowship to get in the church. Holy Ghost tradition, the apostles gave it to apostles. That's it. The apostles didn't give it to everybody, every man and every woman, and everybody came and shook everybody's hands. No. That's not Holy Ghost tradition. No, That's no. man tradition. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's why we, we just cutting it to pieces. <laughs> huh? That's it. Holy Ghost tradition, when uh, uh, Judas died, and the apostles prayed, and the lot fell on Matthias. The apostles prayed, and the lot fell on Matthias, and the prayer was answered because the apostles uh, asked God to show us which one that thou oh, hast chosen. chosen. Man's tradition is a bunch of elders get together and pray and say they're going to elect the that's next right. apostle. That's man, that's not like the Bible. No. No, the Bible is apostles praying, that's not right. the bunch of elders prayed. That's right. And no, no. Now, man's tradition, you got a board of directors that call themselves an apostle, and then they elect a bishop into the apostleship. That's not Bible. No. That's not Bible. Oh, no. That's man's tradition. Man's tradition. We're going to come on back to Holy Ghost tradition. That's right. Huh? Beware. And when I come to Holy Ghost tradition, I'm coming back to what is written here right. in God's everlasting word. Beware. And if you fight the Bible is proof you are hypocrite. That's right. Huh? That's right. Whether you're preacher, deacon, elder, or pastor, if you fight Holy Ghost tradition, that's right. That's atomized in the Bible. You're Hallelujah. not God's people. No. Because God said, My sheep, glory to God, will hear my voice. Hallelujah. And a stranger, thank God, they will not follow. That's right. And everybody that's God's sheep, amen, when their ears come open, they'll start running away oh, yes. from the different strangers that is out here oh, yes. in America and Africa and Canada and Europe and everywhere. They'll run away from them. Oh, yes. Amen. Because they want to hear God's voice. That's it. And God's voice is spoken through his preacher. That's right. He told his apostles, it's not you that speaketh, yeah. but the voice of my father that speaketh in you. Beware. Beware. Does any man spoil you through philosophy? Chapter, chapter and verse again. Colossians chapter 2 and at verse 8. And I want to rehearse the matter how many has been spoiled. Yes. Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the after, after the tradition, tradition of, of men. Lord. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. All right, let's look at philosophy that's taught in churches. And I'm pretty sure some of you folk can identify with it. How many of you was taught in your church or in your organization? There are five minor prophets and five major. Raise your hand. Mm. That's a tradition of men. It never been in the Bible. No. How many of you was taught that Paul died at Nero's chopping block? Raise your hand. Tradition of men, never been in the Bible. That's right. How many of you was taught that John died 96 AD in a pot of boiling oil? Raise your hand. Never been in the Bible. Never been in the Bible. How many of you was taught that the apostle Peter was crucified, head down and feet up? Raise your hand. No such crucifixion have ever been written in the Bible. No. How many of you was taught that the prophecy of Isaiah 96, under us a child is born, a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. 712 years later, Jesus came. Hmm. How many of you heard that? They ain't never been in the Bible. No. So there's a lot of tradition. How many of you was taught that the church started 33 AD? Never been in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Never been in the Bible. No. Never been in there at all. No. That's right. Paul said what? Beware lest any man Look spoil out. you through philosophy. You spoil. Spoil. How many of you was taught, I believe in the seventh chapter, if I'm correct, or the sixth chapter of the book of Acts, right. that's where the seven deacons were ordained when they chose, get seven among you. Yeah. How many was taught those were the seven deacons of the church and now the church got to have seven deacons? Raise your hand. They ain't never been in the Bible. No. The Bible ain't having to address one of them, not one as a deacon. No. Not one. Not one. Do you hear? That's right. So a lot of this philosophy have been taught for years in churches and now the scary thing is, in most cases, you're not allowed to ask bishop questions. Yeah. When you ask Bishop question, then Bishop gonna make you his sermon that morning. That's right. 
You're going to be the church troublemaker. <laughs> That's right. You're going to be labeled the church troublemaker, and they're going to be taught for everybody to shun you. Yeah. But you won't be taught to shun that offering basket. <laughs> That's right. Come on back to the Bible. These things that I recited are still being taught in churches today. That's right. These things that I'm warning you about, these philosophies Philosophy. and theology statements and traditions of men yeah. are being taught today. Oh, yes. Until they don't even look at the qualifications of an elder. No. This is how most churches do it. They catechize you and give you an exam. And if you can pass that test, then they ordain you after they give you a trial sermon. That's right. Most deacons have never heard of the qualifications of the deacon. Of a deacon. If you look at the qualifications of a deacon, it's the same as the qualifications of a bishop. Oh, yes. It only differs in one thing. A deacon can't have too much wine, and a bishop can't have no wine. No wine. The office of a deacon in the Bible, the churches have dwindled it down to just some brother who carried the bishop's briefcase. That's they it. give him water. Yeah, that's right. And collect the offering of the church. That's right. He don't teach. He don't hold the mystery of the faith. He don't know nothing of the Bible. <laughs> All he knows is carry the preacher's bag. You know, you see the preachers, they come up in the pulpit with their big old briefcase like they're about to catch a flight somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Man, man, briefcase ain't got nothing but most time the stolen money and checks <laughs> from the church. Huh? And man, he want to make sure ain't nobody else handle that but him. That's right. Go rich, God. Beware. <laughs> Look out. Lest any man spoil you. I want to thunder this to creation. Thunder it. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And vain deceit. Vain deceit. After the tradition of after men. After men's tradition. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. All right, go back to Corinth. Let's see this. Back in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 13. Yes. Which things also we speak. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Not in the words. Which man's wisdom teaches. Man wisdom teach. There are three separate distinct distinct person in the God here. That's not God wisdom. No. Man wisdom teach there's two thrones in heaven. One mm -hmm. for God, one for Jesus. One Man, for that Jesus. nuts, that foolish stuff is not God wisdom. No. Man wisdom teach flesh and blood is in heaven. No. That folly is not God wisdom. No. Anything that contradict the word of God, they ain't God wisdom. No. No, oh, no, no, no. God wisdom is found in God's word. That's it. Amen. And the preacher will have a certified gospel, oh, yeah. like a certified check That's right. when they stay within God's word. Which things also we speak. Yes. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. But what? But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing. Listen at this. Comparing. comparing spiritual things. Spiritual things. With spiritual. That's what I encourage people to do. That's right. Your church claim is spiritual. I don't care. <laughs> you compare what go on in that church that they claim is spiritual. That's right. With the spiritual book. That's right. The Bible, the scripture. Scriptures. Biblical instructions before you leave earth. <laughs> it's so spiritual. I don't care how known it they claim to get. That's right. Huh? That's right. Compare it with the Bible. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. When I compare when Tyler Perry laid hand on T.D. Snakes after he gave him that one million dollars. <laughs> Medea laid hands Madea. on him. Medea, that's right. That's right. You ain't even got to be a church person. You can be a homegrown sinner. And you know there ain't nothing but playground church. Amen. That's play. Oh, yeah. How the Holy Ghost you going to feel from a cross dresser. Amen. <laughs> you get dressed like a woman and cuss like a man in the street. And then you come to church pretending you a man going off in some tongue. The spirit laid hands on you. Shut up a sucker about them. Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, lemon lime. And a bishop, a leader, a leader of of people, that's right, of people's souls. If the leader's too dumb to know what's of God and what's is not, what's not? how in the world can that man, whoever he is, lead anybody? That's right. 
That's right. There ain't no Bible where a member lay hands on a bishop. No way. The bishop lay hands on the people. That's it. There ain't no cross dresser going to lay hands on me. I don't care if you want to give me a trillion dollars. Amen. You keep your trillion. Get your hands off me. <laughs> That's dressed true. like some old woman, a and woman. I'm gonna let you lay hands on me, and I'm gonna fill up some and anointing. The very thought of it. The thought of it. I'm slain in the spirit. <laughs> all, all I'm doing is saying million dollars, yes. million dollars, <laughs> million dollars, That's Whoa, it. million dollars. <laughs> That's right. Ain't no more Holy Ghost than you see a tap dancing donkey. <laughs> Amen. Are you hissing at what I'm saying? Which things also you know, we speak. You know, you a donkey tap dance, man. You saw something. You saw something. <laughs> Come on now. I'm taking this route to show you the churches today are nothing but a playground and an amusement park. And this is why the center don't want to have nothing to do with church because even the center will tell you, man, that stuff ain't for real. That's right. Center will tell you quick. That's right. Sometimes the... The mother tried to tell her son, son, why don't you come to church? Mom, no, no, no disrespect. But then her son would say, I don't see how it is you can't see. They ain't doing nothing but playing. Yeah. I'm not even in church, mom, and I can see that. Oh, yeah. She invite her son to church. He sit there and see the preacher just duking the people, conning the people, yeah. making fun of the people. That's right. Not getting their soul ready for the Lord. That's right. The church is equal to the ark in the days of Noah. That's right, sir. In the days of Noah, the ark was built to save the people from the judgment of God that came in the manner of a flood. Yeah. Right. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, right. and the church is the Holy Ghost-filled people who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ following God's word. That's right. That's, they are the lively stones, stones. Of the church, right. of the building. Yeah. The building, the natural building of brick and mortar and wires, that's not the church. No. The church is named after that which is in it, the people that is in it. Right. Hypocrites are in it, false church. Yeah. That's right. And this is why the center, they don't want nothing to do with these churches. No. No. Um, nothing. Nothing. And you can't blame them. That's right. You can't blame them. Church of God and Christ just glory in because they have a lot of celebrities. And when thou there. art spoiled. Listen at this. Give me the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. Church of God and Christ have a lot of celebrities, you know, and whatnot. And the church of God and Christ don't speak out against nothing that these celebrities do for a living. No, they don't. They can make movies where they blaspheme God. Church of God in Christ is not going to say nothing. That's right. They can make movies while they're in bed with other women. Church of God in Christ ain't going to say nothing. They can make movies where they curse all through the movie. That's right. Church of God in Christ ain't going to say nothing. All the bishops in there going to say, we'll be glad to have the five Emmy Award actor or actress here. They are a member of the Church of God in Christ. I wouldn't care if you're a member of the so-called Church of God on ice. <laughs> Man. If you don't come according to that Bible, that Emmy Award ain't going to save you. No, it won't. We have NBA players that come, NFL players that come, celebrities players that come. Every last one of them will tell you, Pastor Jenner, don't give us no special seat. No. I most certainly do not. No, no. We was in the upstate Manhattan, New York. Uh, last month and baptized one of the basketball, basketball players from the Clippers. I knew he had to be a ball player because when he wanted to take a picture with me and stood up, he kept going. <laughs> Man, his shoulders was over my head. It was like David and Goliath. Thank God that when we hit them right in the head with the Bible, with the sling in our hand, oh, yeah. before you know it, here's old Goliath going down the waters. Him and his wife. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He even, he even testified. He said it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Wonderful. Amen. So, no, I don't believe in giving celebrities special treatment. We treat them like everybody else. That's right. I don't care how rich or how poor. I don't believe in that. No. I believe that God made everybody of one blood. That's it. And everybody got to do the same thing to be saved 
Everybody must repent. Everybody must be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody must get on your knees. I don't care how rich you are. You got to bow and call on the name of the Lord to receive the Holy Ghost. That's right. Speaking, hallelujah. Speaking in tongues. And the Spirit of God give address. Hallelujah. There's many celebrities watch this. Wonderful. Some of them now make comments over social media. <clears throat> several, several uh, celebrities. Wonderful. Amen. Say, we, we, we heard this man named Pastor Just Someone send me a clip. I forgot uh, two celebrities. Say, we heard this man, oh, he was on a talk show. And uh, I wasn't the subject. And he talked to the talk show host. He asked him, have you ever heard of this man named Pastor Jennings? If you want to be right, <laughs> You listen to him. He said, that man don't care who you are. Wonderful. And I don't. Amen. I wouldn't care if you was a king sitting in the congregation with your purple robe on and a crown on your head with a billion rubies. Hey, king, repent. That's right. That's right. Can't come to you no king. Take that's you right. down the water with your cape on. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. Use your cape for a baptism robe. <laughs> right. Wrap you up in it. Wrap you up in These it. These churches that think they're so high because celebrities go to your church. We got Jesus in here. Oh, yes. There ain't nobody more important than him. Oh, yes. Nobody more important than him. No. Lord Jesus is the greatest, more important thing under the sun. Oh, yes. And this is why I might travel around the world. That's what got me here in Denver. Yeah. I wouldn't have no other reason to come here. I don't want to come. I don't want to come see y'all mountains. What is that to see? <laughs> you, th oh, <laughs> you think I'm going to come all the way down here to look at y'all snow-covered mountains? <laughs> Listen, man, I wouldn't care. I, I wouldn't care if somebody was up on y'all mountain doing the moon dance, the worm. I ain't about to come through all this air turbulence, shaking planes, planes shaking me, my palms sweating like I'm, about, <laughs> like I'm about to go fishing. No! Oh, no. I wouldn't come all the way to Denver. <laughs> the thing that got me here, you here. Souls is here. Souls. That's what got me here. Oh, yes. That's what got me here. Thank God the souls of the people crying out. Oh, yes. That's what got me going everywhere. That's right. Amen. When I fly back home, I'm only home for two days and a half until I get on board another flight again oh, yeah. and go to Canada now. Mm -hmm. Amen. And be there for about four days. Yeah. And then I come back and rest for a while and get ready to go again. That's right. We're doing this. Oh, and just think. See, I had, my body's not fully healed yet. No. I had a stroke in uh, October. Uh, and I had it in my sleep. Didn't even wake me up. And uh, all my, it didn't affect my left side like most strokes do. It affect my right. I couldn't even shave with my right hand. I, my right hand would, couldn't even scratch my face. Mm. I had to call on God and call on him much. I mean, I'm much better than I was, but I had no idea how much it took out of me. Yes. So my body is still mending. Oh, yes. And I feel it. It's still mending. Yeah. But when the Holy Ghost gives you strength, it's good. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. It's good. Hallelujah. So that's why I'm here. Preaching the word of God while I'm still recovering. That's right. While I'm still recovering. So no, Denver, Colorado, I don't want to see your mountains. <laughs> I saw him from the plane, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Listen at this real quick now, then we'll go back to Acts 38 and cut off God willing. Who give me the correct time, brothers? Anybody, give me the correct time. What's that? 7.50? Seven, 7.50, seven seven so that means it's going on 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm almost 10 o'clock at home. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, uh, 750 sound good. <laughs> sound real good. Come on, Sam. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 30. All right. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Now, this is the condition of the churches. The preachers have spoiled you. Oh, yeah. Because they have played with you with the Bible. They won't tell you what you need to do. They, don't, they won't tell you what you need to hear because they're afraid of a revolt, a church revolt. Yeah. They're scared that the board of directors is going to give them a, a hard time. 
and he gonna lose money. He's scared that people gonna stop giving money. Everything in these churches today revolve around money. Don't misunderstand me. It takes money to pay the bills. We, we didn't pray and rent this place. <laughs> no. No, the management want money. That's right. So money used correctly, that's right. That's but what right. I'm talking about is when the preachers will lie and tell you, oh, the Lord just spoke to me, like in some of y'all churches. Some of y'all, some of y'all bishops do it. Some of y'all witness what I'm talking about. The Lord just spoke it up. The spoke, Lord spoke to, the, to me. The Lord only talked to your bishop when you raise money. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Take note of it. The Lord just spoke up to me and told me, wait a minute, there's, there's, there's $50,000. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> guma, 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 guma. Papaya, papaya, okra. <laughs> There's 50 more thousand dollars in the house. And the Lord says, if you don't give it, you will suffer. But if you do give it, I give it back to you a million fold. You know what, folk? It sounds funny, but it is scary. Where a man can be so bold, where he don't fear God at all, he will lie and don't even flinch. That's right. And say the Lord told him to do something that the Lord never spoke. That's right. The Lord have never said it. Never. Give me the book of Lamentations. Lamentations quick. chapter 3 and verse 37. Listen to Lamentations 3:37. Who is he that saith? Who is he that saith? And it cometh to pass. And it come to pass. When the Lord commandeth it not. This is what is missing in church. Yeah. I come from a family of eight. We are very close family. Mother, strict, but yet, you know, she, when we was coming up, she'd play with us. Father, strict, disciplined, but we can play with him. So he taught me balance. We respect our parents. When fear and respect is gone out of a home, that entire home change. In fact, it collapses. That's right. Because everything that home used to be against, they allowed. That's right. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the way church has become. Has become. The fear of the Lord is obsolete. It's oh, gone. gone. It's no more. Where there is no fear, there is no respect. Where there is no respect, anything goes and the crowd will say, it's all right. It's all right. And if you stand up against it, you're looked at as the black sheep. That's right. You looked at as the oddball. You looked at like you're speaking out against something that you should not say. The fear of the Lord, the scripture teaches, is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Everybody can do better if they knew what to do. Right. Many of us are in the religious or the spiritual condition that we're in because we heard some false prophet, went for church to church for years, and we just ate up whatever he told us. That's right. We thought we were praising God, worshiping God, and very sincere. Yeah. And whenever you sincere, God will not let that person depart this life without hearing what they need to do to get right. That's right. That's right. Whether they choose to obey it, that's up to them. Yeah. But when you sense here, one of the greatest examples in the Bible is the house of Cornelius. Oh, yeah. He prayed. This man was so sincere, an angel came to him and gave him Apostle Peter's address. Man, how sincere can you get? That's it. The angel come to him, send men to Joppa. Call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who house lies by the seaside. When he come, he'll tell you what you ought to do. To do. Call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who lodged with one Simon the Tanner, who houses by the seaside. When he come, That's right. he'll tell you what you ought to do. What to do. All right, God, man, you can't be no more sincere than that. That's right. Until the angel come and give you Peter's address. That's right. If you're sincere and honest and truly want to be right, God know the sincerity of your heart. Oh, yeah. And God know what you need. And many times what you need is not what you like. Oh, yeah. That's the difference. When I was young coming up, my mother said, give me that cast oil. 
<laughs> Think of it and give me the Willis. <laughs> she used to give us cast oil, this other medicine named uh, Three Sixes, Mark of the Beast medicine, and the other medicine called Father John. Father John. Man, that was some nasty stuff. But it worked. Oh, yes. It worked. Oh, yeah. The gospel of Jesus Christ that he gave his apostles. In many areas of life, it's hard. It's only hard to us because presently we're not obeying that part. That's right. So therefore, we have a conflict within ourselves because there's nothing wrong with the scriptures. The wrong is in us. That's right. The scriptures don't have to make no change. We got to make all the change. Oh, yes. And because we are hesitant at making the change, think of it. Years and years of years and years of wrong teaching. Being misled wrong for years, holding positions in church, yeah. holding office in church, help building some of these churches. Oh, yeah. Just to find out I was lied to. Yeah. I was misused. What you was teaching wasn't going to lead me into the kingdom of God. It was sending me to hell. That's right. And yet you didn't respect God enough to tell me what I need to do to get right. Yeah. A man of God ain't afraid to hurt your feelings. No. He's afraid of God hurting his feelings. A people preacher, he afraid to hurt your feelings. That's why you go to these churches where the preacher, when he done, he say, I'm sorry if I hurt anybody feeling. I don't mean to hurt your feeling. I don't want nobody to think I don't love you. But <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. Not me. Oh, no. Preachers say, I don't want to step on your toes. I don't say that. I'm not just going to step on your toes. I'm going to amputate your whole legs. Oh, yes. Take your legs out from under you. Oh, yeah. Oh, take God so you can do it like God says it. That's right. Finish up the book of the book of Corinthians now. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13. Yes. Which things also we speak. We speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. But what? But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Compare what go on in your church. You that are here, you that are watching around the world. Yeah. Compare it. Comparing. With the Bible. And see what the Bible says about it. Not no one bishop. I don't care who anybody bishop is. Who he is or who he was. I'm going to the word of God, which is before the existence of everybody's bishop. That's right. Eh? That's right. Thank God when I go to the word of God, that's before everybody's bishop. Everybody. Amen. Amen. And when God talk, that's it. That's it. Close out with Acts 38, son. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. What? Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, Denver. You that bow your head and raise your hands and claim you accept Christ as your personal savior. If you've been watching me long enough, you found out you no more saved than a duck can shoot dice. That's right. Praying sinner's prayer, no such prayer ever exists in the Bible. Nowhere. Nowhere. Baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you're just wet. That's all. You're not baptized. That's right. Everybody, yeah. You got to repent and be baptized, every one, every of, you, one of you, in the name of Everybody Jesus Christ. Everybody in Denver, 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 every one of Denver, you, Denver, Denver, yeah. Toronto. <laughs> That's it. Repent and be repent. baptized, and be baptized, and be baptized, every, every one, of, one you, of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of That's the, the Holy new Ghost. Birth. That's what he meant when he told Nicodemus, hey "Amen." A man is got to be born of the water. Yeah. You got to be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and of the Spirit. That's when you receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Without that, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. 